I'm here with Rem Koolhaas, who is of course the acclaimed Dutch architect and also a professor at Harvard University. Rem, thanks very much for joining me. You're invited to give a, a lecture to the uh, Cannes Festival today. G give us a sense of, of, of what you told the delegates. I think that uh, they asked me, uh, Ogilvy asked me to talk about uh, creativity and um, actually I've for a long time wanted to talk about creativity because I think uh, in our current society innovation and creativity are kind of uh, two standalone. They're extracted from everything else. We create special spaces for them, we accommodate them, uh, we spoil them. And uh, I think that uh, it might be a moment where we uh, need to go in, in a different direction and rather than insisting on creativity as a kind of bubble, to insist on creativity in any other domain. Google was one of the, um, uh, the companies you highlighted and you talked about the division between the, the whimsical and the practical. Their, their HQ is very beautifully designed but the, the servers incredibly functional and, and ugly. No, no, no not ugly, but uh, I think that what we see is the creative space and what we don't uh, get to see is the servers, the server farms. And I think that is part of a larger kind of symptom where uh, in our metropolitan uh, kind of situation we uh, accept the whimsical and maybe in the end only the whimsical. And that everything that is more hardcore, everything that is more practical, everything that is more grim and, and utilitarian is... Uh, exiled uh, to spaces where we don't see it and I think it's a very weird division that uh, again you know if you extrapolate on an enormous scale is perhaps not a desirable condition it's, it's perhaps more productive if we ap approximate it uh, also okay well, I'm interested to get your thoughts in what you think is happening to the to the London skyline we're not going to talk about particular mm -hmm. buildings I mean the, sh the shard is obviously making lots of headlines in, in, in recent months and years but wh what do you make of what's happening to London it's, it's changing dramatically yeah, but uh, London has always changed uh, dr dramatically and it's still not a very dramatic city, so uh, it can go on. I think London has the kind of enormous advantage uh, that whatever you do, you don't disturb a kind of earlier coherence. Uh, you don't disturb an earlier utopia like in Paris. So I think that uh, it actually can, can stand a lot of further development uh, without suffering. And so you think it could be more dramatic. How would you do that with a with a blank canvas? I, uh, Maybe you're working on person, uh, No, no. I, we, we did the Rothschild Bank, I don't know whether you saw it, it's a kind of super discreet kind of building that uh, you can never see in its entirety because it's uh, in such a kind of dense uh, part of the city. So personally, I think the drama is not, uh, you know, what the architecture is about, but I, on the other hand, uh, I don't see it's uh, uh, dangerous for London. You've talked about entering politics, but not in the traditional sense. You're not going to become a politician, but you want to use your company for political aims. How does architecture, how can it have a political impact? I, th I think that uh, at some point I actually wanted to go into politics, because as you know, kind of Dutch politics is not in a kind of very creative uh, kind of moment right now. But um, I see, for instance, a uh, kind of project like CCDV as a kind of political project that uh, in, for me represents a collaboration uh, between Europe uh, and China, or European and, uh, and China, and given the fact that uh, uh, China, the collaboration or the coexistence with China is the most important issue in the next 20 years, I saw that, even though we were very seriously criticized, I saw that it's a kind of political uh, act in a certain way. I'm now working a lot in Doha, and I see that too as a kind of you know, pol political engagement with uh, a state that is transforming very intensely and where participation in such a process you know, has a political dimension. Rem Koolhaas, thank you very much. Thank you.